Hey everybody, uh, welcome to our talk. Um, my name is Joaquin Rodriguez. I'm a software engineer at uh, Microsoft. I live in Austin, Texas. I'm Priyanka Ravi. I also go by Pinky. And I am a developer experience engineer at WeWorks. We're the ones that created the um, Flux project and then donated it to the CNCF. I'm also um, a member of the GitOps working group. So come join us and chat GitOps anytime you want. OK, so today we'll be talking about cluster add-ons. Uh, we will be providing an introduction about what cluster add-ons are. Uh, we will also be talking about some of the challenges around these uh, cluster add-ons and how GitOps, uh, it's a, a solution uh, for maintaining these cluster add-ons and how Argo Flux and Flamingo, Flamingo uh, can help us uh, scale up these add-ons. Uh, we'll be providing a solution diagram and also we'll be doing a quick demo and then we talk about you know, scaling and some, some other, other things. So to get started, uh, uh, what's cluster add-ons? Uh, you might have heard this term. Uh, cluster add-ons are tools um, or applications or services that expand the functionality of Kubernetes. So you can think about a vanilla Kubernetes cluster, or cluster add-ons are enhancements to these clusters that allows you to do really uh, cool things. Um, like I'm mentioning here, they are not part of the core Kubernetes system, um, but they provide essential capabilities. Um, when you think about add-ons, there are different uh, types of add-ons. Um, for example, monitoring and logging. Uh, think about Grafana, um, Prometheus, Thanos, for example. Um, network and communication. Uh, think about the service meshes, Istio, et cetera. Uh, security, you have your policies, uh, OPA, Caverno, uh, and storage, an example could be like Rook. Um, why are these important? Uh, they extend the capabilities of Kubernetes. Um, they adapt to different use cases, so depending on what you're doing, um, you might not need you know, certain add-ons, so it, it, it all really depends. Uh, for example, if you're trying to solve a problem around security, right, so, and then you're going to focus on security-related add-ons. Um, or if you care about insights, of course, you will be looking into the insights uh, add-ons, such as you know, monitoring and, and logging. Um, when you're implementing add-ons, or um, there's some things that you want to consider. Um, the first thing is compat compatibility. So you want to make sure that the add-on is compatible uh, with your version of Kubernetes, or if two add-ons are working with each other, um, that those versions are matching. So something to keep in mind. Uh, of course, you want to have a plan on how you're going to maintain these add-ons, uh, how you're going to update these add-ons. So something, again, to keep in mind. Um, and the resource overhead, right? So if I'm deploying an add-on in a cluster, well, uh, how much CPU do I need? How much memory do I need? So how much is going to cost? So, so those things are something that you need to consider when, when you're um, deploying add-ons. And of course, when it, with any uh, software uh, lifecycle, you, know, you install them, you upgrade them, you scale them, and then at one point or another, you will decommission them. Um, so yeah, so they, the cluster add-ons are awesome, but there are some, some challenges that will follow. Um, the first one is uh, maintaining a fleet of clusters uh, to ensure that they are operating efficiently. I think this, you know, it's self-explanatory. Um, you need to make sure that you have consistent configuration. So uh, let's say you have a fleet of production clusters that have certain requirements, or you have another fleet of non-production uh, clusters that have certain requirements. Uh, you need to be consistent across these um, this fleet, so uh, you, that way you don't have, you know, potential issues. Um, of course, you want to manage the add-ons uh, dependencies efficiently, and also you want to visualize how these operations are are working, right? So you want to have some some powerful UI that will help you, you know, visualize how these add-ons are being deployed across uh, your fleet. And of course, scaling is hard, so you need to. And we'll be talking about scaling in a little bit, but it, it, it's something that we want to, to bring, up, bring up here that you know, scaling is definitely a challenge. Now I'm going to turn it over to, to Pinky, and she's going to be talking about how GitOps in general can help us tackle these, uh, these issues. Yeah, so um, for anyone that's like new to GitOps or any of the tools, I'm just going to go over GitOps and then the tools and then like give you a brief overview of Flamingo. Um, so, GitOps is an operating model for cloud-native applications such as Kubernetes. Um, it utilizes a version-controlled system such as Git, most commonly Git, but there are other sources you can use, like OCI registries, um, as the single source of truth. And it enables continuous delivery through automated deployment, monitoring, and management by a version-controlled system. 
So there's you know, an audit trail, everything's um, locked down. And then you manage your infrastructure and applications declaratively, which has a lot of benefits to it. You can see everything in code, you can tell what's exactly deployed, and it's reusable, you know, all those things. So now, let's talk about Argo. Argo is a, um, a fantastic tool also for GitOps. And the benefits of it are, is that it has an application dashboard that's really awesome, it's powerful. It's a real-time UI dashboard that provides a holistic view of your application and your resources. And there's health monitoring and configuration drift detection as well, so you can detect and get notified when applications become healthy or for some reason get out of sync. Um, it's also multi-cluster and multi-tenant, so you can create sandboxes and establish guardrails across multiple clusters and namespaces using projects, which is an um, object in um, Argo. And then there's also advanced deployment patterns. Um, it supports complex pipeline-like deployments using pre and post sync hooks and sync waves, so you can set up checks um, for pre and post stuff um, of your deployment. And then it's also highly extensible. You can customize resource actions, integrate any config management tool, and also extend the UI. And it integrates really easily into your existing environment. So there's REST, gRPC, API, and CLI enables um, seamless integration with your existing tools. And then I'm going to explain Flux as well. Flux is um, GitOps for apps and infrastructure. You just push to Git and it does the rest. It's declarative, automated, and auditable. It's also designed with security in mind. It's a pull versus push model. So there's, it's created with the least amount of privileges. It adheres to Kubernetes security policies and tight integration with security tools and best practices. You can find out more about our security considerations um, in our docs. So um, there's also another tool called Flagger. So using Flux and Flagger together, you can um, deploy apps with canaries, feature flags, and AV rollouts. And Flux can also manage any Kubernetes resource. Um, infrastructure and workload dependency management is built in with Flux. So it can even push back to Git for you with um, automated container image updates to Git, such as image scanning and patching. And you can describe the entire desired state of your system in Git. So this includes apps, configuration, dashboards, monitoring, everything else you're doing. Um, so you use YAML to enforce conformance in the declared system. And you don't need to run kube, kube control because all changes are synced automatically. Um, everything is controlled through pull requests. So your get history provides a sequence of transactions allowing you to recover state from any snapshot. We also say it's multi-cluster, multi-tenancy, and multi-everything. Um, you can use one Kubernetes cluster to manage apps in either the same or in other clusters, spin up additional clusters themselves, and manage um, clusters including life cycles and fleets. It also works with any Kubernetes and all common tooling. Um, it works with your Git providers, such as GitHub, Git GitLab, <laughs> Bitbucket. Um, you can even use S3 compatible um, buckets as a source as well, OCI registries, all that. Um, and it works with um, customized Helm, um, Harbor, custom webhooks, notifications, and all um, uh, other things like that. And we also say dashboards love Flux. You can use a multitude of variations. Um, there's different Flux UIs out there, including the one I'm about to talk about and um, hosted cloud offerings from your cloud vendor. Um, there's a thriving ecosystem of integrations and products that are built on top of it and different options out there. All right, so now let's talk about Flamingo. So Flamingo was a tool that was created by Weaveworks as well to allow you to utilize both Argo and Flux. So Flamingo is the Flux subsystem for Argo. Um, both are really awesome options. They both have different reasons, like they both have different pros to use them. Um, and so with Flamingo, you can get the best of both. And um, it's a container image that can be used as a drop-in replacement for the equivalent Argo CD version to visualize and manage Flux workloads along your existing Argo CD workloads. Um, and it's drop-in and non-invasive, like it's a very easy component to start using if you're already using Argo or Flux or whatever. And that's the um, GitHub link if you wanna check that out as well. So, why? What, what, what do you gain from this? Why even try this? So, we have talked to different end users and we got some feedback of why they're doing this and why they like Flamingo. And they said that for Argo, the pros for them were 
that they wanted to take advantage of the UI, the scalability, the cluster management, the centralized control plane, and the pre-sync and post-sync validation I mentioned earlier. And then with Flux, they wanted to take advantage of the Helm lifecycle and the depends on, rollback, upgrades, dynamic config Helm values, Helm hooks, and retries. And there's also another use case, which is the Terraform controller. So if you want to manage your Terraform deployments, that's another reason you could use the um, Flamingo UI. All right, and I'm going to pass it back to Joaquin. Thanks, Pinky. So uh, today we will be showing a very small example on how you can combine uh, these tools. Um, I'm going to walk you through a quick diagram. Um, and then after that, I will show you a GitHub page where I set up some instructions on how, how to set up if you want to try it yourself. So like Pinky was saying, when you install uh, Flamingo, essentially you're installing Argo. I mean, uh, you can think Flamingo is Argo. The only difference is um, Flamingo has some extra extensions that allows you to visualize Flux resources within Argo. But if I use the word Flamingo or if I use the word Argo, I'm basically combining them or using them inter-exchangeably. Um, so, okay, so back to the diagram. So let's start with a vanilla Kubernetes cluster. We don't have anything there. Or we just call it a management cluster. And I'm going to install uh, Flamingo, right? Um, after that, you can think of uh, personas. So let's say we have a cluster admin. And I think it's kind of small, and I apologize for that. But the um, cluster management uh, app manager is responsible for um, adding new target clusters into this uh, Flamingo uh, implementation, right? And we're registering these clusters with the help of Kyverno. Um, this is just one approach. You can do many things. You can use the Argo uh, API. You can use the Argo uh, CLI. But you know, for the purposes of the demo, we're using Kyverno. Uh, and also, we're using uh, V clusters. So after that, we create uh, an application set. And this application set, uh, if I can see it correctly, um, talks to a Git repo in which we have an add-on um, uh, repo that contains the configuration for um, our add-ons, right? So also, one, one more thing that we're doing, uh, when we register a, a new cluster uh, using uh, Caverno, we're also setting uh, cluster labels that will tell us which add-ons we can enable in a fleet of clusters. So for example, if you have a fleet of clusters for prod and you want, uh, I don't know, Ser Manager, Kubernetes Dashboard, uh, OPA enabled, you set those in your, um, in, in, in your cluster labels. Uh, likewise for the non-prod fleet. And I'll be showing that in a little bit if that doesn't really make sense. Um, and then that application set will generate uh, you know, a few applications that will target different clusters. Um, right now, just for the purpose of simplicity, I just put one cluster. Um, but you, you get the idea, you can have more than one. Um, also, like I was saying, in, for the demo, we're using V clusters uh, for this. Now, in the target cluster, um, we also have installed um, Flux, uh, the, the source uh, controller. Um, that way, you can install different applications in that target cluster using, using Flux. Just like Pinky was saying, you know, there's some features that we can use in Flux, and there's some features that we can use in Argo, so we're combining them. Um, and then the target cluster uh, will also you know, query an OCI registry uh, to get some artifacts uh, and install the, um, those applications or those add-ons in, in the target cluster. And also going back to our personas, we have an add-on owner that will be responsible for maintaining the configuration of the add-ons in a Git repo. So that way, you know, the cluster admin will be responsible for the administration of the cluster, and then you have an add-on owner responsible for the configuration of of the add-on. And then at the end, we have a user, uh, which can be anybody really, um, and that user will have a unified UI that will be able to see the, uh, the deployments that um, Argo is doing, or Flamingo is doing, and also Flux. Um, so let's uh, jump into the demo. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to show you is the Flamingo UI. Uh, you might be familiar with this already. It looks just like Argo. 
um, with the only difference is that it supports uh, the Flux uh, resources. Uh, the first thing I will show you is the clusters that we have registered already. You can see that I have a, uh, a fleet of non-prod and prod. And if I open um, a production cluster, you can see that we have cluster labels. And you can see that some of these, these uh, add-ons are already enabled. So for example, I have Kubernetes dashboard or reset to true. And I have uh, cert manager, cert to false. So in my production fleet, automatically uh, Kubernetes dashboard is going to be installed and cert manager will not be installed unless I, um, I set it to true, which that's what we're going to do right now. Uh, so I already have a, a PR. Oh, and by the way, this is the repo in which I um, explain the instructions on how to do this setup. Uh, I'm not going to walk through every single step, but there's pretty good documentation, and you can always reach out to us. So this is the, the repo if you want to check it out later. But I already have a pull request, and basically what I'm, what I'm doing, I am enabling my uh, cluster labels. So I'm saying I want you to install OPA, and I want you to install uh, Cert Manager. So I'm going to review. Um, and I cannot approve, let's see. I think I changed something here. Huh? Okay. Oh, there you go. Merge. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. So um, this is going to happen in the background. But I'll, what I'm trying to explain here is that once uh, these labels are set, Kyverno is automatically going to change those cluster labels to true. And then we're going to do some uh, magic with application sets that will allow us to install these uh, add-ons automatically to the fleet of clusters. So I will do that. And also, another thing that I'm doing, I'm going to add a new cluster for non-prod. And I'll show the code in a second. But uh, what I'm doing is I, I want to install a new uh, V cluster, and I'm calling it non-prod East US. So let me merge that pull request as well. And I'm doing these first, that way um, you know, it takes a little while to propagate, so I don't want to be doing this at the end, and then we have to wait. So, okay. So now that that's done, let me go back to Flamingo, and I'm going to show you. So right now I have a project called Workload Non-Prod and Workload Prod. So if we look at the Non-Prod one, you can see that we already have a few add-ons enabled by default, like the dashboard. But this dashboard is actually being installed using Flux, uh, using a Helm release, um, what do you call it, the uh, object. So you can see here that we have our uh, Kubernetes dashboard um, installed. And also, let me go back to the code. I'm going to show you the policy from Kiverno. So why did I use Kiverno? It's just super simple for demo purposes, but it's a very powerful tool. I highly recommend it if you haven't used it. Um, what this policy is doing is every time I install a new uh, V cluster um, in, in my management cluster, Kiverno will be like, ah, you're, you just installed a new cluster. Let me get that secret from, the, from you, and I'm going to register it in Argo. That way Argo can automatically manage that, um, that secret for you, and you can deploy things to that target cluster. So. Down here, if you look at the, um, at the labels that we're generating in Kiberno, you can see that uh, I already have some labels set to, to true. Um, and these are the labels. Um, so once that's triggered, then we have a, uh, a cluster add-ons non-prod application set in which we are listing uh, the components that we typically manage, right? The, the dashboard, the OPA, and the CERN manager. Um, and then we have a template, like, you know, you're familiar with the application sets. And in here, for my cluster selector, basically I'm saying I want you to uh, match the clusters that are enabled by Kiverno. I want you to select the clusters that are also in the non-prod fleet and I also want you to give me the components that are set to true. And based on that, it will generate the application, and it's going to install that component uh, in our target uh, cluster. So you can see here is the, the template. I created a few uh, dummy repos um, that manage the values uh, for these add-ons. 
So that's why it has this uh, placeholder. Um, and yeah, so once, once you do that, just like I was, uh, I was showing uh, a little while ago, uh, it will automatically um, install that cluster to that fleet that you know that, that you're targeting. Um, what else? Oh, I also have an application set for V cluster uh, on how I uh, create um, you know my my V clusters. Um, so it's nothing more than just a, like a Helm uh, install. Um, I didn't want to go too too complicated. I just wanted to install a few V clusters uh, using Helm. And this is how they're getting installed. Uh, nothing, nothing too fancy. Uh, so by now, if I'm not wrong, uh, we should have the new cluster already deployed, which is right here. You can see uh, uh, non-prod ETH US2. Um, and you can see that the labels are there, true. Uh, Cert Manager is also true, and I think OPA uh, is somewhere there. Here, OPA is to true. Um, also, uh, we enabled these in the production, if I remember correctly, in the production fleet. So let me go back to my production. I can pick any of them. And now you can see that you know we have Cert Manager set to true, et cetera. Um, and if I go back to my applications, and if I target my um, my production fleet, you can see now that five minutes ago, OPA was installed in production East US. Oh, well, East US one. Sorry. Oh, yeah, that's fine. That yeah, because we're we're installing uh, these across all the fleet. So, um, so yeah. So we have that, and then we have Cert Manager as well. Five minutes ago, installed in in production. Uh, south. So that's it for the demo. I'll go back to the slides. And again, I'm going to go back to this repo. Again, if, if, if you're interested in setting this up, I have the instructions. Um, this is automatically uh, installed using AKS. But in theory, you should be able to do it you know, with EKS uh, and Google. You know, um, just vanilla Kubernetes, you just have to tweak it around. But, um, or you can always reach out to me if you have any questions. OK, so let me go back to the, to the slides. So an issue with what I just showed you is scale, right? Obviously, uh, with any, any application, right, there, there's limits. By default, you know, with Argo or Flamingo, we're not going to be able to install, you know, 10,000 clusters and, you know, 40,000 applications. Like it, it will break, right? So you have to come up with creative ways on how to scale. And if you look at the Argo documentation, they they make a really good uh, documentation on how you can you can you can scale. Uh, but two options that you can consider: uh, it's you have a management cluster, and then on each target cluster, you can have uh, Flamingo installed. Um, and you know you can you can do it that way, and then you just have to figure it out. You know how do you target this? Like you know, do you want this only for for my production workloads, for my non-production workloads? So, you know, by by region, by zone, by you know by team. Um, so that's what, that's one way. Uh, another way uh, you can uh, shard it, uh, which is like option two. Uh, basically, you know, you have to set up some sort of orchestrator that will manage you know, that, that sharding. And then after that, you, know, you can target different, different clusters. Um, but yeah, so I, I highly recommend you know, looking at the, uh, the Argo uh, documentation uh, when you want it to, to scale. Um, that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Pinky. So I'm just going to go over some key takeaways. <clears throat> so um, one key takeaway is that cluster add-ons are powerful components that enhance the Kubernetes ecosystem. We really wanted to show how impactful they can be for your deployments. Um, and then managing cluster add-ons at scale is hard. We acknowledge that. So we just wanted to show how it can be done. Um, and then with the right tools, though, you can tame this complexity. We've, we've shown how you can do it. And um, keep in mind, there's no right solution to solve all cases. Um, this is you know, a use case that we've seen. So we wanted to share Yeah, it, it really all depends on, on your yeah. use case. So like, what is what you're trying to do? That's why there's many options. Um, so there's no. No right or wrong. There's no yeah. silver bullet that will, no. will fix it all, right? right? So that's true. It's just an option. Yeah. And then we also wanted to um, say a special thanks to um, 
Tebow and Cool Dip, they really helped us out with this presentation a lot. So we just wanted to give them a special shout out. And then um, this is a QR code that you can scan to leave us feedback on our talk. We'd really appreciate it. Also, um, that the top link at the bottom is the link to the um, live environment that yeah. Joaquin's been showing. Um, and then the bottom one is um, the link to his GitLab repo, or GitHub repo, sorry. GitHub, GitHub repo <laughs> that, he, um, that you can go follow the and, um, steps yeah. there yeah. And, and make it happen as well. Right. Yeah, so, so I was going to say, like, yeah, for an, something I was going to mention earlier, but if you're interested in looking at the Flamingo setup, that, uh, that UI, um, it's flamingo.cubelab.pro. It's set up on, on read only, so you can go in there and, and you won't, around. Mess up his you, 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 you won't break it like, just, <laughs> unless you want to. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> the demo's over. Now, yeah, so. demo's over, so it's all good. Um, uh, but yeah, so that's that's and, it. Yeah, and then also um, I'll be at the Flux booth. You can come talk to me if you have any questions about Flamingo or Flux or anything like that. Um, also, we're both um, on the CNCF Slack. If you want to reach out to us there, we're also on LinkedIn. And um, there's also uh, Flux and Argo channels in the CNCF Slack if you have questions for those respectively as well. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you, guys. Do you all have any yeah. questions? Yes, sir. Oh, we are? Did you see one? There's, uh, there's a mic, I think. Uh, uh. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, yeah. So, I think we have a little bit of time. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know there was a mic there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> great. As someone deals with Flux, Argo, great. Love this. Do you need to migrate to a Flamingo API, or can you just bring over traditional Flux Helm releases that you already have to integrate? So um, that's a really good question. I, so I didn't catch he's that. He's saying, so. can you migrate, oh, can you like do this with an existing already Argo instance? Is that what you uh, said? So. Which I one have, do you already have? Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I have both. Oh. But you I can. I them separately. Right? Okay. So I do a lot. Yeah, of you can. Flux, CD, you know, home yeah. releases. Do I need to do anything to convert that for Flamingo or is it just like, it just pulls it right So, so it's a drop in. So you, yeah. you can install, there's, uh, if you go into the Flamingo documentation, they have. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's just do that. Let's just people get. So, yeah, maybe we can yeah, end yeah. the session and just talk. Yeah. Yeah, so.